Hey everybody, it's Josh, the 980 Know It All, coming to you today, actually doing something a little different. I'm testing out my recording thing that I'd use for the podcast, so I'm actually doing both a YouTube video and a podcast at the same time. So if you're on YouTube, you'll notice that the dimensions behind me look a little bit different. Uh, you're not quite seeing the same thing that you normally do on my videos. And if you're listening to the podcast, I'm actually in a different location in my house and a little bit farther from my microphone. So still just testing things out, seeing how they work. And, you know, I'm hoping, hoping that I can actually get to the point where uh, we can do our podcasts occasionally with video. So whoever's the guest, have them on video as well and, and do some fun stuff like that. So I'm trying to check everything. So once again, for those of you on the podcast, if you hear me pause for a second, it sounds like I'm doing something, just kind of looking around, make sure everything's going and YouTube people, that's why I'm looking at my mic, looking at the computer, just checking to make sure everything is working right now. But guys, today it is Friday. I actually figured out what day of the week it is. Uh, I guess Friday, I should just know, it's nice, get the weekend off, I guess. Uh, but I've kind of had two weeks of just, it's been weird. You know, I've said before, I've got my, both my daughters at home. I'm used to having my youngest at home with me. Um, so that's not a big change. But my oldest one, she's been out of school for two weeks now. So that is a little bit of a change. My wife is actually working from home as well. She's been home all week. So all four of us have been in the house doing stuff and it's been different. It's been different. I'm not used to this, I'm used to having kind of my routine with my youngest one and it's all different. So guys, today there is some news coming out baseball wise. The Players Association and Major League Baseball came to an agreement on a number of different topics concerning 2020 and the season and, and what ifs, if there's a season, if there isn't a season, that type of stuff. So I want to kind of go over that really quickly, give you my thoughts, because there are some things that I'm perfectly fine with, sounds good. There are some other things that if you look deeper into what they mean and what they are implicating, there's some big decisions that were made and it's going to impact baseball across the country. So right off the bat, the very first thing that came out was the fact that players get a full year of service, even if the season is canceled. Now this I'm not for or against, it just is. Um, it's going to stink if there's no season for teams like the Dodgers. They're going to lose Mookie Betts unless they, they re-sign him, which I think is a real possibility. Uh, you have players all across the league. You have Trevor Bauer. This will be his this was his um, year to his free agent year, you know. So that you have JT, JT Realmuto uh, with the Phillies, best catcher in baseball, in my opinion. If they don't play it all this year, he's literally going to become a free agent without having to play his final year of his contract, as same with other guys. So there's some big implications with this. Uh, once again, you got guys who uh, maybe were traded to a team and won't even play a single game. And that's – that's what's going to happen. You know, there's nothing that Major League Baseball can really do about that that is beyond their control. And I, like I said, I'm not for or against the idea of this being counting as a season for guys and their contracts. And, uh, you know, it, I don't know. I, I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. There just is an answer. So that's fine. Um, one thing that I do have an issue with is the fact that all suspensions, if there's no season this year, they end. They don't carry over to next year. Uh, if there is a season, then the, those suspensions do occur within the season. But once again, if there's suspensions, but yet there's no games this year, guys don't have to they don't have to serve those games. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with saying that oh well, everybody missed the season, so that counts towards your time. I don't agree with that. I know this plays into the whole earlier thought about of, you know, this counts as a season, whether if, even if no one plays contract wise, but I, I don't, I don't like the fact that guys can get suspended and Oh, doesn't count. Doesn't count. And guys who are um, convicted of domestic abuse, guys who are doing uh, performance enhancing drugs, their, their suspensions essentially get wiped out if there's no season. And I'm against that. I, I'm just, there's no other way for me to put it. I'm against that. So I don't know what, what the right thing for that is, although my opinion is suspensions need to actually be served when there are games. 
That's my thought. When there are games, that's when suspensions happen. Not this, oh, well, we had no season. Everybody essentially got suspended in a way, and you're, you're free and clear. You're, you're done. I, I just don't like that. I don't think it's right. I know that's something the Players Association probably uh, went after, and I'm guessing Major League Baseball didn't really fight that. That wasn't really a thing that they would care about to, to disagree on. So it is what it is. The next topic, guys, this is the one that bothers me. Um, not, not because of – well, it just does. I, I think it just bothers me all the way around. And for those of you who have been out there advocating and fighting for the um, security of the 42 teams, minor league teams that were named as being potentially cut after this season, the writing's on the wall. Their time is coming up. They're going to be cut. And this is going to be something that Major League Baseball has done to essentially confirm that. And I don't think there's any going back now. And it's sad because the team that I started interning with and started not any know-it-all with is one of those teams that's going to be cut. And there's a lot of teams with, with amazing history and tradition that are going to be cut. They're going to just – they're no longer going to be minor league teams. And for me, that's frustrating. And yes, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of stuff that's being dealt with. And the bottom line is Major League Baseball is a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industry, and they're cutting pennies. And what it's going to do is going to hurt the game in the long term. It's going to hurt the game because you're going to have entire fan bases throughout the country lose their baseball team. And those fans aren't going to just, oh, well, since my team's not here, I'm going to find a new team. That's not going to happen. Fans don't just, when their team disappears, they don't just decide, oh, I'll I'll go find another team to root for. Many of those fans are done. They're gone. They leave. They don't support another team. They just don't go to baseball anymore. Now, the really super diehard baseball fans, yeah, you'll have them no matter what. But you're going to lose 45, 50, 60 percent of the fans as baseball fans because now they don't have games to go to. They didn't want to drive an hour and a half to go to watch a game. They had a team in their hometown that's gone now. Baseball loses. Baseball loses that. And I know there's a lot of talk about, well, Major League Baseball is trying to figure out ways to pay their minor leaguers better. And once again, multi-billion dollar industry and they can't pay their minor leaguers enough money to pay for rent and food all year round. I mean, people aren't asking for million dollar contracts for their minor leaguers. They're asking for $30,000 for a year. That's, that's what we're asking for is trying to get guys enough money where they can literally spend their off season focusing on the game of baseball to become better athletes for their organization. So this, this is big. So in 2020, here's what it is. The draft can be cut down to 10 rounds or five rounds. Uh, that's Major League Baseball's decision. And yes, I know some people are saying, well, this will make college baseball stronger next year. No, it won't. No, it won't. Because those who are going to leave to play pro ball are going to go play pro ball. But what it means now is if they're not drafted, they'll sign as free agents for – a maximum amount of, I think, of $20,000. And yeah, that, that's, that's nice money. But if you're an adult, you know how fast $20,000 disappears. When you start paying for rent and food and car insurance and gas for your car and just basic living things, $20,000 disappears real fast. It disappears really fast. So that's what's going to happen. These guys are going to go. You're not going to see college baseball suddenly become this unbelievable wealth of talent. Yes, it will get a little bit better. There's still going to be players who end up staying for another year that wouldn't have before. You need guys who maybe play junior college ball that wouldn't have before. But really, you're not going to get this big, massive wave of major league talent coming in because a lot of them will still go play pro. And so this hurts players. But once again, when you take a draft of 40 rounds 
and you cut it down to five, maybe 10, you're losing out on an entire team's worth of players. You're talking you're going to lose at least 30 draft picks, 30 players that could have signed to play professional baseball. You know what that is? That's your short season teams gone right there. Your short season teams are out the door. They're done. They're gone because you just lost 30 players. And a lot of people say, well, there's still enough players in their minor league system that can fill the teams. Yes, they, they can this year. But next year, the draft can be cut down to 20 rounds instead of the 40. Once again, that's 20 players who suddenly aren't normally there or available. They're off. They're gone. And so you're going to have – a shortage of players because not all players stay to keep playing minor league baseball. At some point guys decide, you know what, I'm going to move on with my life. I'm, I'm going to hang up my cleats. I'm going to be done. And that's going to happen. And the best way for major league baseball to make sure they have enough players isn't to go sign undrafted free agents. It's to simply cut their short season teams. They do that. That opens up, 26 to 30 spots they had to fill and those spots are gone. They're done. They save money. They don't have to bring in as many players. And here's the real thing that, that makes me mad. They don't have to pay them anymore just because they've cut players and cut teams. Doesn't mean they have to play, pay the other minor leaguers more money. They don't have to deals already set how it is. Minor leaguers don't get a raise if they cut teams. They don't get more money. They don't get more food money, meal money. They don't get paid year round. They don't get paid during spring training. They don't get paid during the fall. They don't get paid during the winter. They only get paid when they are on a team and playing games. Major League Baseball doesn't have to change that, and they're not going to change that. Yes, some of the teams decide to increase pay of their minor leaguers by 50% this year. That's a big number, 50%, until you realize they're not making much as it is, 50% of not very much is still not very much. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about guys, they're, they're not going to get any better deal. Minor leaguers don't get a better deal. And you can say all you want that they're choosing to follow a dream. They're choosing to make these sacrifices. No, baseball is a job. And I talked about this list on my podcast last night when I was talking, you know, way too late for me, is that, yes, baseball is a game. And we got to remember that baseball is a game, but it's still a business. This is a business. This is an entertainment business. And to not pay your talent, your entertainers, an amount to allow them to be healthy and get stronger doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand it. It's been going on way too long for decades and it needs to change. It needs to change. So like I said, guys, this year's draft, could be 10 rounds, could be five rounds. Next year's draft could be 20 rounds. That, that to me just simply says Major League Baseball is using what's going on right now as an excuse to cut minor league teams. I, I think that's what's happening. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. I think that's what's happening. And the other thing that's, that's changed is that when guys get drafted, uh, in the year they get drafted, they can get $100,000 of their signing bonus. And then the next two years, they'll get whatever is left split in half. Now, I'm not really opposed or for this. Um, I understand why this is going on. This is, if there is no season this year, Major League Baseball does lose out on a few billion dollars. They lose out on, on contracts for, for TV, for advertising, lots of stuff. They do lose out. They do. So I'm not really opposed to this. I'm not in favor of it, but I'm not against it. I'm kind of neutral on the fence. I mean, if, if you're a player and you get to sign, you get a signing bonus of $100,000 this year, and you know the next two years you're also getting decent little paychecks coming your way, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's not that bad. You, you can live with it. You can deal with it. You, it's survivable. So... That I'm not too worried about. The guys, they'll be taken care of. They're fine. They're not going to be, you know, th those first couple round guys, they get enough money to, to live on, to survive on. But once again, those undrafted free agents, they're not going to get a whole lot. You know, especially now, if there's only five rounds, I mean, think about how many Hall of Famers, how many major leaguers 
were drafted after the fifth round or drafted between six and 10 or, or 10 and, and 40. There's a lot of major leaguers who would have been missed out on, maybe not even have played professional baseball because someone may not have wanted to sign them as an undrafted free agent. We're talking about major league baseball talent that would have, that could be missed, could be gone. And you know what that means? That means the level of talent at the major league level is going to lower. It's going to lower. And now I'm a person who wants 32 teams. I want American League with 16, National League with 16. I want four divisions of four, just so you have the winner of each division gets to make the playoffs. I like that idea. I love it. I love the idea of, of Portland getting a team. But that would hurt talent and, and the total amount of it in Major League Baseball to an extent, not a huge extent, but a little bit. But now if you have even fewer players who could have made Major League level, not even playing professional baseball, now you're going to start seeing a drop. That's going to be a double whammy. And I'm telling you guys, this deal, it, a lot of people are looking at it going, oh, good. The Players Association and Major League Baseball, they were able to come to an agreement. It's a good sign. It's not a good sign. Yes, there are some things about it that make total sense. Given the world around us right now, some of these things make sense. They make sense. I understand. I, I, I see where they're going with it. I'm fine with it. But there are some decisions that were made that are not about what's going on in the world right now. It's more about what Major League Baseball wants to happen in the future. And I know I'm standing on my soapbox again, guys. I've been doing that a lot lately, it feels like. But I'm telling you, if you are a supporter of minor league baseball and those teams that are at risk of being cut, this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign. This is the writing on the wall. If there is a season this year for minor league baseball, go support your minor league teams every chance you get, because I'll be honest, you may not get another chance. Now, some of those teams may still exist in the future, they still might have teams, but they won't be minor league teams affiliated with a major league roster. They're going to be independent league teams. Some of these teams may end up transitioning into college wood bat summer league teams, um, but you're not going to see the minor league level that you've seen in the past. You're not going to see the future major leaguers, the future all-stars, even the potential Hall of Famers come through like you've seen in the past. You're just not going to see that. So guys, it's tough. This has been a tough time for baseball. It's been a tough time for the world. I mean, it has. It's been tough. But this news seems like to me it's a wolf in, in sheep's clothing that is coming and going, look at, you know, there's a positive thing coming out. In all this chaos and all this, this horrible negative news, something positive came out. And underneath, it's not positive. There may be some positive things sprinkled into it, but once again, guys, I'm seeing a writing on the wall for a lot of teams that people love, that people are passionate about, teams that have made an impact in their communities. And they're at risk. They're at risk, and I don't know that we can do anything about it. I honestly don't know that we as fans can do anything about it. We can complain and talk and tweet and write blog posts and do YouTube videos and podcasts all we want, but I don't think we're going to be heard because I don't think Major League Baseball wants to hear us. In fact, you know, Rob Manfred talked about how the lifeblood of Major League Baseball is based around attendance. It is? Really? So the fact that it's decreased the last three years and you haven't done anything but make it worse, attendance is your focus? I don't think so. I don't think attendance is your focus. I think TV money is your focus. I think advertising money is your focus. I think attendance is just a nice number that you have that you can show people, look at people come to our games. That's what that is. And that's decreasing. And at some point, advertisers are going to realize they're not getting bang for their buck. And they're going to start looking at other places. And when that happens, baseball is going to take a bigger hit than it already has. So guys, that's my soapbox for today. And once again, if you're watching on YouTube, it's a little bit different. I appreciate you taking the time. Let me test things out. I want to see how things work. And 
what a better time to test it out than right now when we have no games, no spring training and nothing going on. Test things out, see how they work. Those of you on the podcast, thank you so much. We have had so many listeners already. I've only had it going for, what, a week and a half? And I'm getting listeners all, all over the place, numbers I did not expect. This morning I woke up and realized that the, po- the podcast I put out last night at 9 o'clock Pacific time already had like 40 listeners to it by this morning at 8 a.m. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. But I was, I was excited. I was happy about that. And that's why I'm doing this. Doing this, see what it works, see which one works better. If I end up going more podcast route, then so be it. If I do both YouTube and podcast, great. Whatever it is, whatever works, we're going to find a a happy medium and we're going to go at it. So guys, I'm Josh. I'm the nine inning know-it-all talking today about the agreement between Major League Baseball and the Players Association and how it looks good on the outside, but doesn't taste so good on the inside. Talk to you later.